Hi everyone, uh, this is the first of a few videos to show you how to use Camtasia, uh, there's a Mac and a PC version, to do pre-recorded lecture videos. Camtasia is essentially a screen recording piece of software. Uh, you can also add in your audio, you can edit the video really easily. I use it for pretty much all of my online classes. And uh, if you have lectures prepared that you would talk through in class, where you're kind of guiding from the computer, whether it's slides, programming, whatever, uh, it's a really nice tool to use for that. You can also splice in videos that you take with your phone. So if you want to demonstrate something in real life or if you want to videotape your face and have people look at you talking, you can do that too. So if you're at the University of Maryland, you can get a Camtasia license through them, which is quite a bit cheaper than if you buy it online. Um, but you can certainly buy a version of this for yourself. It's around $300 if you buy it directly. Um, the Turpware license is quite a bit cheaper than that. So once you've downloaded it, um, I'm actually going to be looking at Camtasia 2019, which is the most recent version of this. So when you start a new project, this is what you open up with. It looks really complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what we have here is where the media goes. So if we record a video, that will just automatically show up here, but we can also import audio files, pictures, other videos this way. So just to show you how that works, I can do import media here, where there's also an option in the file menu, import. I'm just going to click this button and then you can pick any file that you want. Um, so I could pick this file and import it. The image then shows up here. You can drag it either into this window, which is your video window, or you can drag it onto the timeline and it will also preview in the video window. So this is a preview of the video that you're making. And then your timeline down here, this is marked out in seconds. So it starts out at zero. This is 15 seconds, 30 seconds. And what you can see down here is everything that's part of the video. Right now, all we have is this image, but if we recorded a video, the video file would be here, and so would the audio track, so you can edit everything separately. If you include a still image, which I actually do a lot in my videos, uh, you can just kind of hover over the edge, and then you get something to drag it so you can change the length of it. You can also click in the middle and move it around, and this works as well, uh, this kind of moving for video and audio. So if we just leave that at the beginning, here we've made it 15 seconds. Um, I'm going to bump it out a little bit just so we can see the delay. So we've kind of got nothing for a few seconds and then this image. And if we want to see what it's going to look like, we can click play. And you see the, uh, the playhead is moving along our timeline. There's nothing in the video until we hit that on the timeline and then that appears. Okay, so if I want to get rid of that, since we're not going to make this part of our video, I can just click on it in the timeline and hit delete and it goes away. It still stays up here in the media bin though, so if I want to add it in later, I can. The main thing you're going to do though is to record new videos with this. And so uh, to do that, you're going to go to File, New Recording, and there's also a keyboard shortcut here. They show you with Control R. You can also do Shift Command 2 on the Mac, and that's going to bring up a whole bunch of things here, which again, will look sort of confusing, but it isn't. So the first window here is what are you going to record? And if you click the little arrows here, you get a pull down menu. So color LCD, that's full screen. It records everything on the screen. Uh, that's a fine option to use, especially if you're switching between programs. You can do choose region, which I do a lot. And if you click on that, it gives you the option to pick what you want to record. So you can see here, when I'm in this window, it's drawing this green line around the edge of this window and everything outside the window is sort of grayed out. That means it's only going to record this window. You can also click and drag to highlight a region. Um, it doesn't really make sense on a website like this, but I often use this when I'm uh, doing PowerPoint presentations. I'll show them in presenter mode on the screen, so I'll have the main slides plus my notes and previews, but I'll highlight just the section of the screen that has the slides, and so I can see all my notes, but the video only captures what's in that section. Um, so for now, we're just going to do the full screen color LCD. This option here is what you can use to record with your camera. 
Uh, we're not going to do that recording our faces right now, but I'll eventually make a video about that too. And then we have two audio options here. Uh, the first one is basically you talking. It uses a microphone. So it says built-in microphone. I'm actually using um, just a Apple like headset that you would use with your iPhone. It's a good idea to use some kind of headset or microphone. You don't need anything fancy. It works just fine to use regular Apple earbuds. Um, but if you just record on like, you know, your laptop's built-in mic, it gets a little bit echoey, just like it would on a video chat. Uh, this is system audio. If you have just installed Camtasia, this may be grayed out and there'll be a little question mark. Basically it just needs to install an extra driver that's not installed for some reason by default. Um, doesn't cost anything. So if you don't see that option, you'll see a little question mark uh, the first time you do it and it'll install that and you get that option. That will record any sounds on your computer. So uh, if there's a video playing on the computer or if there's audio, if you wanna hear little beeps and boops and alerts, that's what gets recorded with the system audio. Um, I often make videos with just one or the other or both of these turned on. It's good to turn system audio off if you're just planning mostly to lecture because if you do get like a text message or something, an email in the background, those sounds can be really distracting. At the same time, if you're just trying to capture your computer doing something, turning off the built-in microphone means you're not going to pick up background noise. But we'll leave them both on for now. And when we're ready, we just click Start Recording. It gives you a little countdown. And then I actually have two versions of Camtasia running right now, but you'll see a little film thing like this turn red at the top, and that lets you know that you're recording. And right now it's recording me talk. And when I'm done, I can do stop recording. Once I've done that, the recording that I've done shows up here in the media bin. And since I didn't have anything else in the timeline, it's put it down here. If you add more videos in, they won't automatically show up on the timeline necessarily. Um, and we can see we have two tracks. The first one is the video, and then the one on top is the audio. And we'll talk about how to edit all of that eventually. But you know, ideally, if you're trying to get things done quickly, you just do your whole lecture. And uh, once you're done, you're going to export it. So there's a bunch of stuff that we actually will want to modify here, but I just want to walk you through the whole process. So we've got our video on the track, and then we're going to do share, and then local files. So that's just going to let us automatically output this to a file that will be stored on our computer. But there are other options if you want to investigate those. Um, I tend to like to have them locally, and then I can put them on Canvas, I can load them on YouTube, I can always have a version. So we're going to do local file. And then you usually can just go with the options that are in here. Um, it, MP4 is a nice portable format, so I tend to just keep that selected. But let's click on options here, because that gives us a few things that we can pick. The one thing that I change in here sometimes is dimensions. Um, I will show you how to adjust the dimensions in the, uh, in the video window here, but this is basically how high quality do you want to output this. Um, of course, the bigger it gets, the larger the file is. I tend to pick one of these two HD options. Um, you know, they often come out kind of the same. I usually will go with the 1280 by 720 unless I'm doing code, um, something where I want it to be really sharp for people if they're like zoomed in really close, which sometimes they will. Um, and so if I'm coding on screen, I'll make it a little bit higher resolution. Um, but 1280 by 720, that's going to match a lot of what your monitors look like. Um, it's not too big, but it gives a nice HD video. So you just pick that. Um, these options underneath, preserve aspect ratio, you do want to keep that checked because uh, if you don't, it will take whatever dimensions your video are, your video is, and force it into 1280 by 720, which means it may stretch it or make it look weird. Um, so I always keep preserve aspect ratio so it doesn't get stretched. And then uh, fit within size just means it's going to stay inside the bounds of what you've picked. It won't overrun the outside. So that's the right settings that you want to look for. We'll say OK to those options. Go ahead and save that. 
And it does take a little while. This is a short video, um, but if you're outputting like a half hour video, you can go make yourself a sandwich while it's exporting the movie for you. And then you have an MP4 that you can upload, upload anywhere you want. So that's the real basics of doing this. Um, Let's look at a few more of the advanced features. So we've recorded one segment of video here, um, but sometimes you'll want to stop for a variety of reasons. So uh, when I was trying to do this earlier, I had my internet on, you can see it's turned off now, and uh, people kept texting me and my text messages were getting right in the middle of the screen I was recording. So you may have something like that happen. Uh, you may accidentally click the wrong menu. You may stumble over your words and just want to stop regroup and pick back up. And so it's common to record a short chunk of video, uh, usually longer than this, but you know, talk for five minutes, save that as one piece, and then come back. So if we want to add in a second recording, we just do the same thing as before, new recording. That's going to keep it in the same project. It'll just make a new video. Um, I'm going to keep all this the same. And as we see, it counts down here. We can scroll down, look at some of the options, just so we know that's in our video, and do stop recording. Um, actually, let me just show you pause if you have it. So that's if you just are like not sure what to do, or if you wanna click around a little bit, you can pause and then click resume to just keep going and it will pick right where you left up. Right, It will pick up right where you left off. Um, if you're like, you know what, I'm done, you can just click complete. If you do start over, that gets rid of everything you've done, but starts you back at the same recording screen and then delete obviously gets rid of it. Um, so I do pause fairly often if it's just like, oh, I'm not sure what thing I'm gonna say next, but I don't wanna make a whole uh, other video that I'm gonna piece in. For now, we're gonna say complete and you can see our new video has popped up here, but it's not in the timeline. So if we wanna add it, we can just drag it down here onto the timeline and it's going to automatically bump it up there for me as I drag it. So now it's off the screen. One thing that we can do is control the zoom of this and so there's a zoom here and if we make it really zoomed in then we see very close detail of the audio and video. As we zoom out we can make it so we see the whole thing. As you start editing you'll start seeing what zoom levels right for the task that you're trying to do. And if we want to see that working, we can kind of go to the end here and play it. And we see it will uh, carefully go or easily go between our two videos. Okay, you also can edit when you're down here. So there's a pause. If I drag my playhead, there's like a little pause in here that I don't like. So the most common kind of edit I do um, is called a ripple delete. So you have a green and a red here. The green is the beginning and the red is the end and they're kind of all matched up with the playhead, but you can grab and pull either one. And you can see with the, uh, with the blue hashy, it's sort of highlighting a section. And so from there, we can do all kinds of things to get rid of it. If you right click on it or control click on the Mac, you can do delete range, that will just remove the highlighted stuff, uh, but it will keep the time. So if we just look at that, now you can see that highlighted section is empty. It just deletes everything in that section. I'm going to undo that and show you ripple delete range. And what that's going to do is just splice out what we have selected. So it gets deleted, uh, but the thing on the red and the green will be smushed together so they match up. So we'll do ripple delete range. And now you can see that we've pieced things together nice and smoothly, and that little blip that I had wasn't there. Um, this is great to use for all sorts of things. So if we zoom in a little bit here, and then uh, scroll over to the end, we can just click here and click play. Um, actually, this hump right here, I know this is me saying um, because I do it a lot. And so maybe I just wanna get rid of that. Typically, if you're recording a video, you don't have to be that super precise with your speech. Um, I have sometimes taken the time and gotten rid of all of the ums and stumbles in my videos. So ripple delete is great for that, where we can just find the um, highlight that, and then do ripple delete range, and the um goes away. 
And you can see there's little marks to show that it has stitched together two pieces there. So ripple delete is great for taking out little chunks like that, little blips. Um, if you do get like a text message coming up, you could just wait for that to go away, continue with your recording, um, and just kind of start back up at the sentence that got interrupted. Use ripple delete to just remove that chunk of video where you're dealing with the text message. If there's a lot of that, it gets difficult to catch it and there's a risk that you might accidentally leave some in. Um, but if there's like one thing and you're really on a roll, just leave it in, make yourself a little note off to the side to go through and deal with that later. So that is that. Um, we can also add our image back down here. We could put it on a new track if we wanted to. And if we had audio, we could import an MP3 here, dump that in, and all of that would work fine. So that's playing with the timeline. And it's something that if you play around, click all of these options, you'll start to find things that, um, that are useful that you may want to play with. Okay, so let's talk about one other thing. Um, I sort of messed this project up in a way that I intentionally left. Uh, because I had this image first and I dragged it onto the timeline and it adjusted the size of the video to fit that image. And then I went and recorded the screen, which is totally different dimensions from the image. And so the screen is kind of embedded in here with a lot of black space above and below. So we may want to edit the canvas. You can avoid this problem by just starting with a recording of the screen that you're using. Um, and that way it will size itself directly to the screen. If you drag something in, it'll size to that and then everything else is going to be fit in there. Okay, but I messed this up and that's fine because I want to show you how to edit this anyway. You may eventually have to do it. Um, so we're just going to do right click or control click out here and then go to project settings. And this is going to show us a whole bunch of things, but what we really care about is dimensions. What are the dimensions of the video? From there, you can see we can pick up here 720p. That's that 1280 by 720 that I had mentioned um, I often use as an export. So let's set that as our size. And then everything else sort of gets set with the default values, which are all fine. We can click Apply. And now our video is definitely that resolution, but it's kind of smushed because it was constrained within those previous dimensions. And so we can click on our video here and we can drag it we can pull at the corner and resize it. We can move it around and we can do that for all of them. So I've clicked on the second chunk of video here and we can see that it's selected, but we can't see it because what we see in this preview window is always where the playhead is. And so right now it's showing us the first video. If we drag over to where we see the second video, then we can look at this and again, do an adjustment. So it fits in there. And if we go back and forth, we can see that these are actually lined up pretty well. Now my dog picture, which did fit in there, now it's kind of outsized. It's going outside the boundaries. And so if I click on it here, again, I can resize it. Sorry, that was me accidentally zooming. zoom out a whole bunch just so I can get that done. There we go. Okay, and now if we drag along, now everything looks nice and big and fine. And so again, that option, you right click or control click outside the bounds and do project settings, and that allows you to pick the dimensions that you want this to be. So that's a common kind of adjustment you might want to do. So those are the basics. The core thing you're going to do here is record new videos, um, edit them down here by taking out chunks, um, whether it's deleting them totally, ripple deleting them. You can import media, drag it down here and manipulate it on the timeline, set the right dimensions on your canvas for your video. And then when you're ready, share to a local file and that's going to allow you to save it as an MP4. So that gives you the fundamentals. If you have materials that you show on your computer in class, you can basically show them here, record it with yourself talking, and end up with a totally serviceable uh, video lecture for your class.
The next video I make is going to show you how to use some of the cool features over here, um, but already you've got what you need to get started.